Okay, I'm starting a little bit early as I try to do, and so that means we probably will stop short a little bit. But uh, just wanted to make sure that everybody knows where we are. Uh, this is week 10, and on the 12th, you have some assignments due, and one of them is uh, XLS 11, XL case 11. We've already done it. In fact, now we're working on access cases, and so you should have had it uploaded. Uh, then we have exam two, part one. That's an objective part of the exam. And then exam two, part two, is the hands-on portion. As I mentioned there, if I make references to moves, I'm really talking about Canvas. Then I also have some uh, screenshot, screencast examples for part two. I have two examples for them. And then as, as I put at, at the end of each module, I put this file, resources for quizzes and exams. And I've checked and everything is in there. And then the resources, right now we're working with, working with the resources for the Microsoft Access cases, okay? So that's there after every module. And here's the textbook that we're going to be using now. We've moved over and we're using the Lambert textbook that provides you a step-by-step -step way to learn and work with Excel. And pardon me, with Access, all right? So we're going to look at case number two. And I have that file downloaded here, the resources for Microsoft Access, number two. Okay, and we're gonna create a personnel database. We're gonna work with tables, some queries, a little bit on report design, although access reporting is kind of icky. I don't care much for it. And then I have an example file from your old case. This is a, a case involving a company called Hudson Palmer. And uh, you're gonna find that ACCDB2 key that file is in the welcome module of Canvas. And then over in the Lambert and Cox textbook, well, in the Lambert and Cox uh, files, you're gonna go to uh, chapter six and you'll find Garden 06. And that's in the chapter six. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be working with. Now, I've already had, Download today. I'd already downloaded the Garden Company six, so I've got it. So I'm going to go back over here into the welcome. I'll go back into the course modules and I'm going to go into the welcome area. And I'll mute everybody here. Glad to see all of you here. And I'm going to find that ACC to be. ACCDB2 key. All right. And there it is. I'm going to download it. Show it in a folder. And I'm going to throw it on the desktop. Right. And it said I had it down there already. So there it is. Okay, those are the files that we're, we'll be working with the garden company and that ACCDB2. When you that that file there, I have a caption for it. So indicate that it's a key. When you download the file, it's going to say ACDB2. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this thing so I can save it on my desktop. I'm, uh, I'm an ACCDB2 uh, key. And then you'll wanna open it up, okay? You enable the content, and then you wanna file this, save the file on your desktop. And then we when we finish today, uh, and you can put, I'm just going to add Harmon on here. When we finish today, you can upload it for the workshop credit for access case number two.
Okay. We're going to do a couple of other things here with this file, but I'm going to close it off here. But I do want you to, to, to be aware of the fact that we are working uh, in concert. And there's a, well, there's another file we're going to need. So click on files and scroll down. And it's, it's called, and let's Hudson Palmer. It's the Hudson Palmer uh, import file. So scroll on down here and you're going to find, it says Hudson Palmer import. This is an Excel file. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to import a file into a database so that you understand that I may have Excel files I'm working on, and I need to put them into a database base. So we're just going to do a very simple import exercise. So we want to come down here to Hudson Palmer import, and I'm going to download it. Okay. And I'm going to show it in the folder. And there it is. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit when we start to work on ACCDB2 key Armin. Now, as I had mentioned before, and you need to be on top of this, we're now working in a textbook that's nothing about anything but access. It's all access, and this is the Lambert text. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And you'll want to go in the table of contents. And, and you'll find chapter six. This is maintaining data integrity. And this is under the relational database techniques. And so you can click there and they work on a case here called field tests. They also had the companion text for you, uh, the, the file for chapter six called Garden Company. And if you want to see step by step how things are done, now we're going to do almost everything of that type today. Uh, so you can read that chapter six in and hear the screencast, and you can play around with Garden 06 if you care to, but you, you should upload it or this ACDB2 key as your file for workshop credit. Okay, all that being said, I'm gonna go back over to the modules. Okay, and of course we're at mar module 10, and I talked about what we've got at the end of, the, it's due at the end of the week. And I can't emphasize enough that on the hands-on part, we've done everything that I ask you to do in exam two, part two. I also provide you any written instructions. I also provide you uh, screencasts, two examples. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And uh, it just really shouldn't, okay? Um, exam two, part one, and I had somebody send me an email. I don't know where to find the stuff for this. At the end of every module, I will put, here's the point distribution. So you can know how, you know, how many points are assigned to all these different types of assignments. I have resources for quizzes and exams. And I'll, I'll name the quiz or, the quiz or exam and I'll tell you where to find it. Okay? And then resources for the MS Access cases. And we've looked at that today. Well, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to, going to diminish this for just a sec. And I'm going to come over here to this file called ACCDB2 key and then I put my last name after it. Now let's open it up. Okay. And we're going to look at this table called Hudson Palmer 
case two, okay? And let's open it up for just a second. Now, this is a starting file, a starter table, table or a fragment table. And when I, back in the old days, when I take people through the, through the entire process and this is what we worked with, we also had to add in some other things like how many hours they worked and all that type of stuff. And that's where this import comes in. Okay. We're going to import some data. Now you want to make sure, and let me say this as I move through, if you have a question, please feel free to, to stop and say, hey, I have a question. It's not that big of a deal. It's fine. I know that y'all guys have not, folks have not had that much experience with access. But I think once you're through with these first six cases, you'll feel pretty comfortable. We're not gonna do anything too complex. So I'm gonna click, now let's make sure first of all that you have the Hudson Palmer import Excel sheet on your, on your, on your desktop, okay? And we'll go back here, and I'm gonna click external data. When I do, you'll see the menu that I have in terms of what I can import or link to. You say, what's the difference? Here's the difference. If I import a file into Access or into any database, I've taken what I have and I've dumped it in there and it's, it's over. If I create a link, then I, then I have a, a table that can be updated because every time the table's updated, the, every time the link is updated, the table, the, the table in the database gets updated, okay? Now that's a little more complicated and it's typical of what goes on when you have a server or you have multiple users. Okay, and so that's, we're not gonna do anything with that, but we are going to import an Excel file. So click on import, under the import, external data, then import and link and click Excel. And we're gonna find the source where it's at and we're gonna go up here to the desktop. And we're gonna come down here and we're gonna find the Hudson Palmer import. Okay. And I'm click open. Now I can import the data, source data into a new table. I can append a copy of the records to the table. If I do, I'd better make sure that I have the same number of columns and the same type of data that I'm going to append. All right. Uh, and, or I'm going to link this data source by creating a link table. We're just going to do a simple import today. And I'm going to click OK. And I'll start to get the import wizard or dialog box. And it says show the worksheets. And, we've, and if there are multiple worksheets, there's just one in it, it shows them. Now notice it comes down here and shows us all the, all the columns or the fields and then all of the records, okay? I'm gonna click next, and make sure that I click that the first row contains column headings. If I don't, I'll have a mess on my hands. And then I'll click next. Now this is where I can go field by field, I can skip a field, I can change the data type, I can do some prep work, before I ever landed in, in, in the database. But I, I'm okay with what I got, so I'm gonna click next. Now, here is where we start the first thing in terms of what we call referential integrity or data integrity, and that is a primary key. A primary key, as we've talked about before, is nothing more than a way to make sure that every single record is is unique. If you don't have unique records in a database, you've got junk. 
and you'll get anomalous reports, you'll get duplicates, you'll have all kinds of trouble. So the best way is to make sure that you have a primary key. If you have your own, Access will let you use it, but Access doesn't play real nicely with that. So what you wanna do is go ahead and use the Access primary key, because it's gonna give you a set of serial numbers. So you know what's going on, and then we can click Finish, and we're good. And we should see that table in there Okay. You'll notice we have two of them, Hudson Palmer case two, then we have this next one, Hudson Palmer case two, and let's open it up, and there it is. Now what I'm gonna do in order to differentiate these two tables is I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm going to st skip the old, old school stuff of how they name things. I'm going to do it like this. I'm just going to jam all the, the, the letters together and put Hudson Palmer case two. And I'm put uh, Harmon. Notice instead of having the underscores and all the weirdness of that, I've got it all thrown in together. Let's open this up and take a look at it, okay? Now, this has got a lot in this table, so we're gonna close this, we're gonna push the shutter back. And here we are. And we'll maximize that. And now we'll scroll across, scroll across, cross here. Now notice something, we have an ID and then we have the last name, the first name, the skill, uh, the hours they worked in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, their hourly rate, their skill set, okay, uh, the ratings, etc. Now we want to go into the design view for this, and so I'm going to click. And I'm going to go to home, and you'll see on the far left the design view, or here's this little tab I can click. No, I don't want to mess with that. I'll just work up here. And here we are back in the design view. Notice that I've got the field name. It's an auto number. In other words, every time I add a record, there's a new number. There are two reasons to do this. One, I create a unique record every time. Number two, I know how many records I have, <laughs> yeah, which is a good idea. Now, it is required. Let's come down to the, to the last name and let's go down into the, general, into the field properties. You'll see, is it required? No, then why would you have it there if you don't require it, okay? And zero link, no. If you're not gonna have, if you, if you have, if it's not required and you save it and somebody doesn't put the data in, you don't know if somebody made a mistake or if they were, or, or, or if they were, uh, had some nefarious reason like they're mad at you and they're leaving and they wanna mess up your database, who knows? So the first step is to make sure that every record is one, is unique, and number two, it's complete. If you can't collect the data, don't have the table, okay? That's, it's as simple as that. I know in the real world it's a little different than that, but there are ways to handle it. And one of the reasons that, for example, um, you pay, one of the reasons you use your phone or a credit card to pay for your stuff you buy is simple. You swipe it or they scan it and there's no human input. The machine does the input so, so that Walmart knows you did indeed buy milk. And if you walk out with something that wasn't swiped, uh, you get that funny sound and the people come over real friendly and want to find out what's going on. Okay. So we're going to say it's required. 
no length. Uh, zero, zero length, no, we don't allow it. Same thing on the last name. I'm gonna put yes. Allow zero length, no. Still. I'm gonna put no. Uh, for the skill, I'm gonna put it's required. I can just type it in or I can use that little drop down menu, whatever's convenient for you. Uh, but no. On the hourly rate, the same story. Um, it's required. And index, we don't have an index. Then on these each quarter, I I have it so it's it's a number, so I'm gonna put required, yes. Okay. Same thing going for the second quarter. So I require these. The phone number is required, yes. Now, we've come to a point where we have to make a decision. Am I okay letting people put in phone numbers any way they want? <laughs> or do I wanna force a format that keeps everything unique? If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna have to take the phone number and change it from a number to text. And I'm going to make it short text. And it's required, and I don't allow zero length. Now, if you look here in the general field properties, you're going to see a thing called an input mask. Yeah, the textbook talks about this as well, so if you want to read about it some more, it's there. I'm going to save the and here's the input mask. And it says, this is what your data will look like. And they'll even let you try it. And you say, well, that's, that's, that's okay, that's cool. Click next. And there's the input mask. Input mask. And they say, do you want it with the symbol, without the symbols in the mask like this? Or do you want the symbols in the mask like this? And what they're saying is, the machine scores can take and store those phone numbers, and you'll notice it's a lot less space, but it's unintelligible to us, so I'm just gonna put with the symbols in the mask, and that way it looks like a phone number a human being would recognize, and I finish. Okay, and now I'm done, so I'll go back up to the data sheet view. Let's say save the table, and yes, here we are. Now, if I try to save a record without data, it's going to stop me. So I'm going to put in a new one, and this will be Kruger. Okay. And this is Freddie. And Freddie is an expert witness. And we pay Freddie 500 an hour for obvious reasons. But you know, as I'm going along, because it's so cool to have Freddie Krueger working for my law firm, I forgot to put in his, uh, I forgot to put in the number of hours he worked. I'll put in his phone number. That's area code uh, 666. It's, and then uh, 666. Six, 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 six. So poor, so good. And his ratings, he always gets an excellent rating. And the rater is KKH. And I'll make a comment. He is scary, but fun. Okay. And now I'm ready to go back to the data sheet view. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
it says you must enter a value in the Hudson Palmer case to Q108 field. Okay, so I'm put, I'm put, oh, all right. Uh, he didn't work for us, so I'll put a zero. Now I'm done, I'll go back to the sheet view. Okay. Oh no, in Q02, it's gonna repeat that. So he didn't work for us then. And here in Q quarter three, he worked three hours and in quarter four, And then here we're going to put he worked 10 hours. Okay. And so now we're ready to go back up to the, we're at the data sheet view. So we go to the design view, we're going back up to the data sheet view, and we're good because everything's been saved in the record. Okay. So I'm ready now. And I'll close that table off and we'll go back here. And with all my fun here. And I'm gonna repin that and we're back to where we're normal. So now we have our database. We have Referential integrity, okay? And we have data integrity, so we're good to go. Now, <clears throat> I want to do a little bit more of this table. So as I scroll down here, I see two, I see three interesting tables. One of them is called Rater, the other is called Rating, and the other is called Skill. Let's look at the Rater table, first of all. Let's open it up. Wow. Well, I can use these to create a drop-down menu for my table. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So we'll go back up here to the Hudson Palmer table. And we're gonna open it up. And we're gonna come over to Raider. Well, we're gonna to go to design view. Okay. And then we'll come down to the Raider. And you'll see a tab called lookup. And I'm going to click over there on the combo box. And it says the row source type. I'm using a table or query. And then on the third line, it says row source. Click on it. And then you'll see a little blue button. And I'm going to use the Raider table. Okay. And let's look at this. All right. And we want to save that. And you'll see the SQL in there. And let's go upstairs to the database and say you save the table. And what I'm going to show you, we've built ourselves a nice little drop down menu. I click on Writer, and guess what? Now I need to go back into the design view. I got ahead of myself. And we have a bound column and we have two column counts. And each column width is one inch. And we'll put a semicolon between it. We'll put one inch and then a semicolon and then one inch. There we go. Semicolon. And now we're ready to go back up. It says save the table. Yeah, we'll save the table. And now we're fixed up. Now when we click on the writer, see what we get. If we, and we'll scroll this out. And if it's uh, Bradley Palmer, then I know to use BP. 
It's Franco Martinez on ODU's FM. RF is Ron Flinderson. This is, you encounter these all the time. And when you get these drop down menus, there's a reason. The, you're populating a table, okay? And they want to make sure that the data are, that you put them in correctly. Okay? Now, we've got another way we could do this. So we'll, we'll just close this table off. Well, we're, we're gonna leave this table open and let's go down to the design view. And let's work with the rating. So come up to rating and we're gonna look at tab and we're gonna do a combo box. Okay. And we'll come to the third, which is the row source type. And we're going to find the rating and we're going to add it. And we're going to put rating and score. And there we are. I'll put yes. Now, when we go up, up, we'll save the table and we'll go up now and we'll look at the rating. And now we've improved this. Well, we'll go back down to the design view. I always get ahead of myself. I've got a two column count and the column widths one inch, semicolon, one inch. There we go. Now we're ready. I always get ahead of myself on that step. On the rating. Now watch. I'm going to click here, and there it shows us the score or numeric rating or a verbal rating. And so we know what that means. We know we have a scale of one to four. If I wanted to just do numeric ratings, I could flip that and it would just give me the numeric ratings and then the verbal or the, uh, the, the word rate, that the particular word associated with it. So far, we've really improved this table. It's pretty tight. It's put together pretty well. We have all the data that we need, et cetera. Okay? Now, one of the things we didn't do when we imported this is we didn't add all of those hours to get the hourly, the number of hours worked for the entire year. <laughs> so we forgot about that. Okay. So now, you know, our choice is to, uh, our choice is to, is to run a query and do an expression. Well, we'll see that. We have a lot of records, that's yeah, not gonna be worth the time. But we'll close this off now and we've got a nice tight table and we're ready to go. Now we're ready to run a query, okay? I'm gonna stop for a minute. Anybody have a question or want me to go back and, and, and show you what I did with something? Okay, let's go ahead here and I'm going to click create. And before I do a query, I'm gonna create a form. We talked about this before and that a form is a way for me to input data um, A form is a way I can use to, to input data and, and uh, uh, is much easier than to just simply sit and write data into tables. So we're going we're gonna to click on the form wizard and I'm going to get all the fields from that table. We'll click next and we want it in columnar and we'll click finish. 
Now, in the form, I have, you know, in, I have, I can use a layout view, which lets me work with some sizing, stuff like that, or I can go into the design view, and here is where I can add control buttons, uh, I can build an event that goes in here, I can put in fillback and color, all of that type of stuff. If I want to, I could add another field. I can also, I can click on design and I can put in control and command buttons, okay? I can insert an image, say like the company logo, etc. We'll go back up to the form view. And you'll notice as we talked about the other day, it has the number of records and I can search through and find the records, etc. Okay. So, so far, you yeah, know, we've worked with the form. And, and when we get ready to create a new record, we just click on create new record and away we go. Now, there are, uh, one, there's one other thing I want to show you in terms of this. And let's click. Uh, Well, I want the home. Well, okay, click more forms. And I can click what I call a split form. A split form shows as I input data in the form, it shows me what's going into the, what the table looks like. There are many, many people who like this because it, 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 if, you're, if you have people in your company who are keyboard and putting data in so you can see what you've entered. Now, if you've ever registered for website, bought anything, or, and you filled out all this stuff, and then you end up at a point and they show you everything you've inputted and said, is this correct? They've been running a split form all the way, and then they just show you the view of the split. So you can see, is everything correct? Yes, okay? So we're not going to change that. This we just a plain vanilla form, and we're good. So we've done a form. We've created a form. Now we're ready to run some queries. Okay. Now, oops, I forgot one thing. On our table, let's open that table back up, and we have a field called skill. Let's go to the design view, and click on it. And we're going to do a lookup table for it. And I'm going to use a combo box. And the real row source will be a table called skill. And I'm going to put in the skill and then the skill descriptor and we'll run it and it's going to show us what this looks like. And so I'll know what PS means P-I-E-W-L-R. I'll know what they mean. The yes. And we have the column count. It will be two column counts and we're going to stick with column widths of one inch. Semicolon one inch. Save the table, and there we are. So now when we're over here on the skill, I don't have to get confused. I know what each of those are, so I know which one to choose. I could do this on states of the union. I could do this on zip codes. The whole point, though, is this. I really have now formatted this table in a nice way and it's convenient. It has the drop down menus and you'll notice I'm going to close the table and we're going to say yes, we're going to save the changes. Let's go down into the forms and see if it did anything for us there. So we'll find the form. I'll open that up. And when we go down here, we'll look at the skill. Should have changed the form for us, but it doesn't. Mm. 
Let's go to the design view on this for a minute. Well, it's not letting us do that. I don't want to take the time to, uh, to try and work through a solution on this. There's some steps I've missed, but well, wait a minute, Here, here's, yeah, okay. Well, it's working on the writer. And if I'm not happy, it's simple. Let's just close this and let's get rid of it. And we'll just delete it. And then we'll create a new form. And we'll do the form wizard. And we'll see if it's gonna play nice with this this time. Oh, I got the wrong one. <laughs> Let's create form wizard and we're going to use Hudson Palmer case two. I'm sorry, folks. There's the skill drop down. We come down, there's the rating drop down menu, good. And the rater drop down. So we just had to do that. So we're, we're good. Now, we're gonna run a query. And I have some examples of some where we've, we've done a little bit of work so let's open up this thing called task three, because I believe this is, yeah. Here's one uh, where I said, I want to see a list of the people with their skill levels, their ratings, their first name, their last name, and their comment, okay? And if I don't like how this is laid out, I'm just going to go into the design view, okay? And I've got their skill, their rating, and I'm gonna put comment here, then last name there, and then first name. And this will make a lot more sense to us. There we go. Their skill, their rating, and notice. And we got the comments. That makes a lot of sense. Now we can reverse this table if we cared and had the first and last name and then all that data. That's going to be easy to do. Let's do that. Here we'll just come down here and we'll get their, their last name. And we're going to get their first name. I can do it either double click or do the menu here. And then I'm going to get their um, I'm going to get their skill okay. and then I'll get their um, rating and I'm going to get the comments and then I'm going to get the writer. This is going to, this can be much more telegraphic and tell us what we want. Their first name, their last name, their skill set, uh, their rating and the comment. And then who was the writer? Okay. So I've got all of this. 
So I'm going to close this off and I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to copy it because I want to do something more with it than this. So rather than reinvent the wheel, I have a, I'm going to, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to call this task 3A, okay? And we're going to open up task 3A. And notice it's the same as before, but we're going to embellish on it a little bit. All right. I'm going to go to the design view. And I'm going to get their hourly rate. I already have their ratings, so I'll run this. Okay. Now, if I want to, I'm over here, I can work on a total. And I could get the average of the hourly rates. If I want to, I could get a, a, a count of how many records I have, et cetera. I could also use some expressions if I want to. And I can put these hourly rates into ascending or descending order. And so I'm going to back down to the, the uh, design view and I'm going to put this, I'm going to sort it in descending. And there we are. Okay. Now I know their hourly rates. I've got the average. Now I could come back down here and I want to do another total. And see, this is one of the things about access I don't like is it will only, it's not really friendly if I want to write, it'll give me a decent set of numbers. So if I'm doing a report, I can get the average and I could do the sum, that type of thing, and then just do a print screen and throw it in a report. Or if I'm working on the fly in a meeting, I can pull this stuff up. Now I can also use expressions and I'm going to show you what we're talking about. So we'll close this jewel off. Okay. And we'll look at task four. Okay. Now we're doing virtually everything that the authors heard me, Lambert and Cox talk about in chapter six. And the Garden 06 file is a good file to practice with, okay? Here we have the total number of hours worked per person, the total earnings per person, okay? And let's go down into the design view and look at this. And we're gonna see one of the reasons I tell you, if you have some computational work to do, you're better off, if, you're, if you have a commercial product like SAS or SAS, SAS Visual Analytics, or you have SAP uh, or Oracle or one of those products, it's gonna be easy for you to get the total by person and the total, uh, they'll give you the total by person, it'll give you the total by, type of uh, a skill, it'll give you the total by uh, quarter, all of those, all of those numeric 
which would be a nightmare to try to do all this in here with the limitations, okay? But I wanna show you the expression so you can see why people are so intent on getting these so-called hybrid products. Here's an expression, and I'm gonna take this, Jewel, and I'm gonna copy it, and you'll see what I mean. Here's the total hours worked. The total hours worked is an expression, so we, we have a, a, a colon there, and then we have each of those quarters in brackets. So we get the total hours worked. Now look, there's not a lot of work. It, this isn't too difficult to do, and if we wanted the total amount, we'll take total hours worked, which we've created times, uh, their hourly rate, and we'll have what they made. And you say, uh, how do you know that? Well, it's pretty simple. <laughs> we'll come back over here to see the total earnings per person. Okay. And here we go. I'll copy it for you. As I've mentioned before, if you're going to input some of these, you'll want to uh, do it using a notepad of some kind before you throw it into the, uh, throw it into the design view here because it's just a lot easier. Here's the total earnings for 2008. This is uh, total hours work times hourly rate. Notice we have the brackets. Now, if we wanted to get an average, or the, the more the more detailed we want to get, okay, the, the the more unruly this becomes. So let's go up. Let's go up top. And we'll scroll up there, hopefully. And we have the total hours worked. And if I want to, I can do a, a total on it. And I can get for the total hours worked, I can get an average. I would want the sum. Etc. Now again, Microsoft has incorporated this feature with a query so that if you're using it, you can just simply get the sum aggregate or sum the what we call aggregate numbers and do a print screen and pop it into a word report. Or you can do this on the fly. Okay. it may be a lot easier for you to export this into Excel so you can work with it. In fact, we're going to do this. This off and I'm not going to change this any of the layout. Nope. And I'm going to export this thing because it's just as unruly as it could be. So I'm going to click on task four and I'm going to click export to Excel, and I'm gonna put it on my desktop, okay? It'll be the file format of an Excel, of an Excel file, and I'll click okay. And let's go down and look for it. And I should find, uh, should find it in here there's support center, um, da, 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 Hudson Palmer, that's the import. Here it is, task four. And I'm gonna rename this Hudson Palmer export, okay? And I'm going to open it up and I'm going to save it as on my PC, on my desktop, and I'm going to save it as a, as an Excel workbook. Okay. And here we are. Now we have 
all that data and we have the ability with Excel to do all kinds of nice stuff like put it into a pivot table. We can, we can calculate all types of statistical data. We can chart this if we care to. We, uh, we just, we, now, this is why you've heard me talk about these hybrid products, commercial products out there like SAS Visual Analytics, uh, um, SAP and Oracle. And I know you get tired of hearing that phrase, but trust me, you'll be doing this type of thing when you're working with doing some data sets and you'll be thankful you have a product where you can do, you can use, use that uses the best worlds, uh, uses the best aspects of a spreadsheet and the best aspects of a database. Okay. I can't emphasize enough to you that understanding what we've had is, is we started when we looked at, when we looked at the data warehouse concept and we had this idea of tables that are just filled with dimensions or characteristics and then these fact tables that have the records of transactions, okay? And then we pull them together and we harvest data and then we pull it up into a, into a dashboard or we pull it up into a report. This is when people talk about data mining, people talk about data warehousing. This is, this really is the cutting edge of what's going on in business because we have so much data and the ability to leverage law, large numbers to look for patterns, okay? Now, Here's, a, here's an Excel table. And there's all kinds of stuff we could do with this. Let's take, for example, the, the number of hours, total hours worked per person. Well, it's pretty simple. We can sort this, put it into descending order, et cetera. I could do something just as simple as apply some conditional formatting. To, to create a, a visual, visualize the data. And I'm going to use date gradient fill. And you notice we had put them in order. of hours worked. We could use color scales. And they're in ascending order, excuse me, that's by default. I could do some icon sets using conditional formatting. Directional. Now you don't want to get too crazy with this, okay? But you get my drift. And I'll save it. So I've got my import there. My, now I've imported and exported. We've done a form. In fact, we've done two of them. And then we have the report. And reporting in Excel is a night in access is a nightmare. It's it's just not a good tool. <laughs> Once you have your data, take the data and throw it into Excel or or uh, or use a screen, a print screen, or put it or put it into Word, whatever. But the, I'll just show you. And I have, I've had people say, oh no, Excel's access just has beautiful reports. Well, you can see already, once you get a certain number of, of fields, okay, 
it becomes problematic. You see, I'm trying to scoot this over here. And now I'm going to have to go to the layout view. I'm going to try to find out what I've got here. So I have to engage in some stuff like this. Moving that field over. I got to tell you, my friends, you've got better things to do than this. And you see how jumbled it gets? That's why I hate it. So I'm going to close this off. And we'll get rid of it. Well, we've gone quite a ways today. We've covered a lot. And I've stopped a few times for questions. I'll stop uh, one more time here. Does anybody have any questions about what we've done? Well, hopefully if you say, I'm a little bit lost and a little bit concern, then show up Thursday and you're there and you could ask me questions, you'd probably be a lot, lot less, uh, you'd probably be able to get better questions and responses. But again, we've got this done and you'll want to upload that file. And I'm going to take this, uh, 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 this Hudson Palmer export and I want to save it as a Excel file, but I'm not going to fight that battle right now. But what I do want to do is to have you take a look at Garden 06, Garden Company 06. And so they say, rename it. I'm going to call it Harmon. Now it will let me enable the content. And all they have here, what they have here are four tables with their customers, with their employees, a fact table, these are orders, and shippers. And you can see they're basically empty. And this is because they want you to focus more on table design and you'll see. And here's where the authors and I part ways. Why you want the last name, you want all that data. You're foolish if you don't have it, it's stupid, frankly. And the first name here needs to be moved up. And I'm sure they've got some exercises in there for you to go through to mess with it. But you've seen what the table ought to look like. So if you want to play with something and not worry about breaking it, that's this would be the one. You want the credit for the workshop for Access Workshop 2. You want to take that one we did and upload it. And I'd also say this. I don't want to sell short the textbook for the course. I'll go back over here. This is the Lambert and Cox. And here in chapter six, they're going to walk you through see we did a we did a uh, here they here they did a drop down menu.
And you can see they go into tremendous detail. And they give you some shortcuts. But I went step by step, we'd be three days. But I do give you enough there to work with. But I do think it's worth the time to take a look at some of this. And what I like about this tech, because it's on online, is if I want, I can uh, I can skip. Here's one for example, data validation. And this is one of where I use field validation. Okay, and I'll just show you real quickly. We're in the garden company. I'm gonna see, let's look at the customer. Let's look at the, the employees table. Let's open it up. And then we'll go to the design view. And, Let's see the title. Well, let's do, well, I think, I think I'm going to try this with the on the employee ID. Let's see if they give us a, no, they don't give us a, uh, on the state they might. Let's look at the state. It's Washington, okay. Let's see if that's going to fly. All right. And then we'll go back down here and we'll put a validation text. Okay. Now I'm going to run a query on this. So I'll close this off. I'm going to create a query real quickly. I'm going to get their employee's last name and the state. And I'm going to run a query. Okay. And it's going to give me state, which is why I should, what I should get. And I know that I've got valid data. If I put like CA, it's going to even mean nothing. You can take a look at chapter six there in terms of, of creating uh, parameter queries, that type of thing, and see for yourself. Okay, folks. Well, we've put in a good time today. and We started about 15 minutes early, so I'm going to shut it down. And anybody have any questions? If you don't, I'll stop to share and we'll go from here. Okay, folks, thank you for being here, and um, I will see all of you on Thursday.